Hello, Lisa. Hello. Uh, Lisa, I want everyone to know, arrived with a massive, massive entourage of herself. <laughs> yeah, I travel and alone. And her purse. I travel alone, exactly. And she did her own hair and makeup. And I didn't even know I was doing this. I thought I was just coming for an interview, but I'm happy to be here. And feel free to well, ask me anything, nothing. You well, know. look how, I think we're pretty psyched to have you here, okay. too. Well, thank you. So, my personal favorite moment from this season of The Housewives. Oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> but this is a good one, is the miniature horse. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, have you guys seen that episode? I mean, amaze. Well, it was, you know, you do make a decision as to, uh, you know, what, what can be filmed and what shouldn't be. <laughs> and it was my husband's birthday, and I was thinking, well, what could I buy him? I mean, he truly is. It was his 70th birthday. A man has probably, you know, as pretty much what he wants in life. But we always used to have a lot of horses. And I thought, well, we're not riding anymore, apart from each other, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Twice a year. Exactly. <laughs> if he's lucky. And, you know, I thought I, maybe he would just love this little miniature horse. Anyway, if you followed the episode, it kind of went wrong. But it all resulted in we actually do now have two little miniature oh, horses. Oh, you do? Yes. What uh, are their names? Yeah, Diamonds and Rosé. Oh, Life is not all diamonds and rosé, but it, it should be. So, yeah, they live at the house, and I'm passionate about animals. So, yeah, it really has kind of how has, added to our menagerie. How has Jiggy adjusted to having the two horses? Jiggy doesn't think he's a dog. He is just being catapulted into this kind of world where, you know, he's an activist as well. He works with children with alopecia because Jiggy's always suffered with alopecia and so he works with the National Alopecia Areata Foundation to kind of bring mm -hmm. some levity, you know, and, and go to meetings with the kids and walks on the marches. Um, <laughs> yeah, he does walk sometimes. And he's, um, you know, just become a little dog that I think people saw his struggle. It was kind of suggested that we had him euthanized because he had severe allergies. And he's been with me, really. And, and oh, no, that's Pink Dog. That's not Jiggy. That's Pink Dog. Ah, that's Vanderpump Pet's collar. So, <laughs> <laughs> Jiggy's there somewhere. No, that's Lisa Renner. <laughs> Pink dog again. Guys, where's Jiggy? Jiggy's there where somewhere. Where are you getting this animal furniture? Uh, well, it, this is Vanderpump Pets. Oh, my God. Now this. That's Jiggy in the back with Ken. There's, there's Jiggy there. That's uh, Pikachu. Um, I've <laughs> had an incredible fight this year on our hands and I don't know if many of you are aware of it about the Yulin dog meat festival and certainly when it was brought to my attention on Twitter nobody had heard of it and I was absolutely staggered that this barbaric festival they call it and festival kind of conjures up a celebration you know and this is a festival at summer solstice in uh, Yulin mm -hmm. where they believe in torturing dogs and I have pictures of Golden Retriever, for example, strung up by his neck while they sever the limbs and cook them in front of them. I have many, many pictures that have been documented of dogs being skinned alive, boiled alive. And for me, this is barbaric, and I'm doing everything in my power to, to stop this barbaric um, custom. Now, I have two major causes in my life really I mean I have many things that I support keep the memory alive and um, as I said National Alopecia Areata and working on behalf of dogs and the LGBT community and each one of us can make a difference and as we've seen this year with marriage equality coming to fruition finally which we've worked so hard and campaigned so hard for we're just always working towards a goal so this year I'm really doing everything I can and working, hopefully, with um, the governor to try and stop this because it really is awful. And I've organized a PSA, which we've uh, produced ourselves, our Sharon Osborne, to help me, and organized a march to the Chinese consul. So we've done all that to really draw attention to it and put it on every news channel. And I think now a lot more people are aware of this awful, awful um, celebration they call it now they believe in torturing the dog makes the meat more tender as it stimulates the adrenaline and it's just honestly if you go to stopulinforever.org you will see and it comes with a warning some of the most heinous yeah. awful awful images you've ever seen and 
Dog is man's best friend, and I've been lucky enough to be... Um, you have eight. I have eight, yes. We've just rescued another one from uh, the Sacramento uh, Animal Rescue. I saw him on Twitter, and literally we drove within 12 hours. It took me eight hours to drive there and back to pick up this little guy who's incredible. But I've been fortunate enough to be the judge at the Hero Dog Awards every year. And when you see exactly what dogs can do that we're not even aware of that dogs are, you know, they're post-traumatic stress syndrome dogs. Dogs are detecting cancer now. They predict seizures. Um, obviously, we know the CNI dogs. We know the therapy dogs, arson dogs. And dogs, really, that just are so courageous and so empathetic and sympathetic to our needs. And I think we should be equally supportive to theirs. And I love the fact that you use your platform to actually promote issues that can help society rather than sell dresses. Well, yeah, exactly. I, um, I do believe that with celebrity, and I use the word celebrity loosely because I don't know exactly why I would call myself a celebrity. I'm just doing the same thing pretty much that I've always done for years, having had 29 restaurants or whatever with my husband and raised my kids and being philanthropic. But I think with celebrity comes um, a certain amount of responsibility, a responsibility to draw attention, to use it for good. Of course, we're going to, you know, try and promote things and enjoy that and have fun because there are a lot of downsides to that as well. You have a lot of your privacy taken away and, and you're a target for a lot of things that being anonymous wouldn't you you wouldn't be but I do think that if you can really do some kind of good and and use it in a positive way it's very very important what's been for you the biggest up and the biggest down of doing the show now for 200 episodes wow um I've met some incredible people I mean even the other night you see just Jennifer Lawrence saying, oh, she's my favorite housewife. And, you know, somebody like that walks into your restaurant and you admire them so much as an actress or you've seen... I remember the first time when Anderson Cooper came up to me and he said, I am such a fan of yours. I'm thinking, okay, he's a really serious person and I'm an idiot and he's like a fan <laughs> of mine. It's like, what's going on here? So I'm thinking, this is kind of bizarre. But, um, yeah, I've been fortunate enough. But also, as I say, I can't stress... To be able to, I do inspirational women speaking, to go to cities and talk to women and really implore mm -hmm. them and tell them and encourage them to have confidence and to go with their dream and find their niche and develop their talents. And I really enjoy that. Um, and I was that person that I hated even standing up at my own birthday party and making a speech. So you never know. You know, I think in life, expect the unexpected, really. Um, for me, being given this platform in terms of philanthropy and being able to pick up the phone and say, I need your help, mm -hmm. and actually make things happen. And I really do think that is a positive aspect of it. The negative is, you know, being drawn into... Spats. Crap, to put it nicely. Yeah. Um, you know lawsuits that you you know just had one thrown out where the judge says this is nothing to do with them oh but it is they were you know twice removed it says nothing to do with them but by your name being involved then suddenly it, it you know garners press and attention and things like that are really annoying when you're just trying to run your business and, and live your life um there's been many ups and many downs i mean speaking at the united nations incredible opportunity mm -hmm. um about issues that are important to me, being voted Woman of the Year by a state assembly, um, just all these things, getting the Ally Award by Equality California, um, as I say, being a straight ally to the gay community, and I believe as a straight woman, heterosexual woman, um, just trying to be that segue, trying to encourage, you know, parents, because I believe that, you know, often it's the education of the parents with the kids because we still have one in four youngsters when they confront their parents about the sexual orientation thrown out on the streets. We still have 40% of the homeless youth in America LGBT. They're statistics that still give me goosebumps every time I say them. And I've done PSAs drawing attention to that fact, you know, the fact that we've got to be empathetic, we've got to love our children unequivocally. 
I mean, all children, you know, they're a pain in the ass at some point, <laughs> you know, but to just stick with them and stick with them through it. And I think sexual orientation isn't something you choose. And no, it's not. As, you know, we should be a kinder, a kinder society and it's never been about tolerance. It should be about embracing it. And on a lighter note, what was it like when Jennifer Lawrence went into your restaurant? Well, you know what? It was funny because we get a lot of celebrities... Um, in in our restaurants, mm -hmm. and and you cr try not to. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, she came in, and as I say, we do get a lot of celebrities, and I'm always very protective of them. And trust me, I've seen things that <laughs> that make your mind boggle. Really, people that you know are in mm -hmm. rehab, ordering a drink at the bar. <laughs> I've seen I've seen everything over over thirty years of having restaurants and wine bars and clubs, I've pretty much seen it all. And you hear a lot, say a little and write nothing, you know. Um, but Jennifer Lawrence, she came in very understated. She came in with her girlfriends and she said, oh, please join us, you know, please come and, and, and talk, to her. talk to me. Lovely, lovely young woman. You can see why she's a star. She's, you know, just got such great presence. And I got her out of the restaurant and uh, paparazzi as so often happens because social media you know things start to gather momentum like when Gaga comes in she can come in anonymously mm -hmm. bang 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 some people are posting it and then you know it goes it goes everywhere and there are a plethora a smorgasbord of press photographers you guys <laughs> outside <laughs> making my life difficult so I got her out the back door and and she left pretty much you know unnoticed no pictures and then she went home and she used all the pictures and the videos that she'd taken in the restaurant, and she made her own montage to Vanderpump Rules theme song and post it on social media. I thought, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah, she did it. She said, I loved Absolute Pump Restaurant, you know, and she did that. And I thought, well, that's great payback, really. And what's, uh, what's different about the season of the show for you, of uh, The Real Housewives? Um, because well, with Vanderbilt Pearls, I don't even know how you keep a straight face, like, filming that. Well, I, mean, I, I often don't. You I, know, mean, I, I mean, I do have, I think, I don't know, 250, 300 people working for me, and you see my naughtiest 12, or you see <laughs> a, a group, you know, that they're an authentic bunch because they have known each other for years. And I think so often in reality television, when you put a group of women or you put a group together, that they don't really know each other. The stakes aren't that high. But when you're in front of the cameras with people you've known for years, then, you know, it, it's a different dynamic. Um, Band of Pump Rules is different animal to Housewives. I produce Band of Pump Rules, and it's right in the heart of pop culture. I'm not proud of all their actions, but I'm kind of proud of the show because it's really hit its stride. It's funny, it's naughty, it's risque. It has to be these days to keep people interested. I mean, so you have someone trying on heart pasties, right? Yeah, oh, that's no, a, I, I'm just like, come on, you know, let, let's have fun with it. Yeah. And people really enjoy that show and it gets a lot of attention, certainly. Um, they, they are very different. I mean, I always feel like I'm the pigeon in Vanderpump Rules and I'm the statue in Housewives, you know, what do you mean? Well, you poo on the statue and the statue oh. gets pooed on. <laughs> so um, so it, it's very different, uh, definitely. But what's different this year? Well, every time they change the dynamic of the women, it becomes, you know, you have a different experience. And um, do you, I know that you said backstage, I was really impressed, you've never asked them to cut a scene or cut a moment from the no. show, which is amazing. I mean, so you, uh, you're... You knew going in that whatever you said was fair game. Because I feel like a lot of people do these shows and they blame the networks. Well, last night, I don't know if anybody watched Housewives last night, um, it was part of a larger conversation and we were talking about, mm -hmm. oh, um, Eileen Marriage. Davidson. And, uh, look, I, I think if you enter into this arena of reality television, you put your life out there. We made our business your business when we entered into your living room. And I don't feel you can be precious about it. And no, I haven't said take things out, but I have said, can you make sure this is put in? Can you make sure that makes it? Because that justifies why I feel that way, you know? But I think that don't enter into reality television if you're going to be, oh, you can't talk about this, mm -hmm. or you can't talk about that. The only time I've ever really shown some concern was when my daughter got married because it was after we'd finished filming really 
and she was getting married and, and it wasn't about our show, it was about, you know, and you saw the build up of the planning to it because obviously that was what was going on in our lives. But I said, Pandora, it's up to you. You talk to the producers and she said, well, we'll film it and we'll give them an hour and a half and they can choose. And I said, this is your day. And she negotiated with the producers, not financially, I'm talking about she negotiated about what she would be comfortable being shown. Mm -hmm. Because I never wanted her to turn around and say, well, it was my wedding, but it was about your show. Yeah. No, no, this was about her wedding and she could show what she wanted and she got involved with that. And who's the housewife that you're closest to this season? Um, well, obviously I have a history with Kyle and we go up and down, backwards and forwards. And, and I think one of the kind of premises of reality television is you're supposed to express what you're thinking. And I think in life often you wouldn't necessarily say, but you don't want the audience to be thinking it and you're not saying it. That's always the kind of dilemma, you know. Um, maybe at a dinner party you would think, I won't say anything, but I think on reality television you've got to say, hold on a second, I don't agree with you. Whereas maybe you might go home normally. <laughs> but, um, but with Kyle, I think we're close. And there's a new lady coming into it, Catherine Edwards, who I think you'll enjoy very much. I think she is a very bright, um, bright woman who I, I really do enjoy. But, you know, I've had great moments and negative moments with most of them, really. So I mean, that's life, right? Yeah. How long do you see yourself doing it? I don't know. I didn't see myself coming back after season four. And I can say now that there was a lot of discussions before I came back. And I, I didn't know that I'd made the right choice. But I think I did. I had a, a great season five. Mm -hmm. um, this season, a bit of a news break was difficult for me, difficult again. And those are not moments I relish. And it's also quite challenging doing both shows at the same time, even though Vanderpump Rules is largely documenting my life at Sir and my interactions. But with all the work I did for you, Lynn, doing Housewives, running my three restaurants, um, being involved in my daughter's business, LVP Sangria, and everything else, um, you know, with the LGBT, I certainly hosted so many events. And, you know, looking after our kind of dog advocacy. And Ken. Yeah, well. I mean, where does Ken fit into this? Well, he's just right there with me. And <laughs> God bless him because, you know, if he, if he wasn't, I don't know that I would be quite as prolific as I am. And, you know, 33 years of marriage, it's great to have somebody that's totally on your side, even when you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you say this season was difficult for you? Just Well, I, I never want to preempt it because... But some of it got pretty, um, I can't, you know you what, can't get Bravo's here, they'll kill me. I can okay. see you over there looking at me saying, Lisa, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch the story and see how it plays out. But let me say, I know you're going to tell me off, I've been there before and I didn't like it. Sorry. But you seem to have a really good grasp of it that it's just part of the job. I don't ever really think of it as a job per se, and I've heard people say that because I think if it was a job, I think I would stick to my restaurants because there are easier jobs for me. Certainly having, it's an experience and it's an experience that has really created so many mm -hmm. other, as I've said, you know, being able to, being, you know, even being able to sit here and talk to all of you and I feel free to ask me any questions, I mean, anything you want, you know, and I always go into an interview and I always say, no, nothing's out of bounds. Ask me what, whatever you want, you know. Is there one moment that you wish from all the episodes that you've done that you could take away? Oh, I'm sure there's many. I'm sure uh, you look at it and think, ooh, ooh, but I think you have to learn from that. You know, last night I probably wouldn't have said to Eileen, well, tell me about, you know, your marriage and tell me about, so when you... I, because if that offends her, I don't want to hurt anybody. My intention would never mm -hmm. be. But really, I think she was oversensitive. And I think, as I say, you're on reality television. Come on, you know, your life is, you know, one of my children was adopted. And, and that, that really, I thought, oh, okay, how are we going to handle this? He was 18 at the time. And we had a talk. And, you know, I knew this subject would come up. And it was handled as delicately as it could be. It was handled the way he spoke to me in front of the cameras, like he would speak to me as if they weren't there. He asked me 
in front of the cameras and I will never forget it. Mum, do I have any siblings? In front of the cameras. He says things, they just ignore it. So I think do not immerse yourself in this arena if you're thinking, I don't want things come to come out. Because if you're going to have skeletons, we saw, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've seen uh, over the last six years, people have had secrets. We saw last season. Oh, yeah. We've seen with Taylor. We've seen people have had secrets, and invariably they will come out. I mean, next season it could come out that I'm a man. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> really? Is yeah, this? <laughs> are you choosing this platform to tell us? Yeah, this? exactly. Hey, it would be a great platform. Oh, my God. <laughs> And I think that's the perfect segue to audience questions. Ask Lisa any, hashtag ask Lisa anything within reason. I might not answer. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, as an animal lover, are there any pets that you would like to adopt in the future? Oh, um, I'm, I'm more of a dog lover. I do, I do love animals and have great... Yes, there's so many I've seen. Has anybody seen one of those giant rabbits? Like, literally, those rabbits no. are... Oh, they're huge. I can imagine a big, fat bunny running around my house or garden in, in Beverly Hills. I love a, a llama when I've met a llama. Yeah, I, I could. I could have one of everything. I could have Noah's Ark. You should totally get a little uh, miniature pink pot belly pig because that would totally fit with I your have color one. theme. I you have one? I married him. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Ken. <laughs> I'll be divorced by the time I get home. <laughs> yes. Hi, Lisa. Hello. I was just wondering what the best and the worst or the most difficult part of um, producing your own show is. Is what? Producing. Uh, producing your own show. Um, well... It's funny, actually, you ask that because I've seen, I've seen things where I've thought, oh, no, they, they can't say that. You know, I've looked at the, the rough cut and they disappear when they ask the question. I'm talking to you. Come back. <laughs> um, I, I've seen things in the rough cut where I've thought, oh, no, you know, they've said that. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel that should that be in? And then I think, are we making a show about what we want them to say, or are we making a show about what they do say? So sometimes I feel, oh, that's just... But then it invariably goes in anyway. I mean, do we want to see Jax, this episode, sitting on the toilet? I actually think he was just doing a wee because I think he's a big girl and he probably does sit on the toilet. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the, it, it was funny in the way that it shows more about him than it does about, you know, we didn't see anything graphic, but it shows about him that is just willing to do whatever he and the bikini modeling session at the store was just a gift exactly i mean that's i mean just... you know they don't care so you know there's a certain kind of animal so to speak to do reality yes. television and i'm one of them <laughs> hi thanks for coming um, we see so many facets of you on the show as a, a businesswoman and a philanthropist and i think one of my personal favorites is seeing you as a wife and mother um, being one myself all right. Um, so with your, you know, you've, you and Ken have been married so long, what would be a piece of advice for, um, for a long and, and happy marriage? Separate bathrooms. Um, well, that <laughs> always helps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that's a good question. And I could really, you know, talk for hours about what makes, uh, you know, a happy marriage. I mean, obviously, largely, it's going to be <laughs> down to who you're married to. But um, I think one of the prerequisites for going into any relationship is to have respect for each other. And I think it's very difficult, and humor, because I see the funny side of everything, even if it's not funny, it's funny to me. <laughs> but I, I think if you lose the respect in a relationship, it's very hard to come back from that road and come back down there. And I know, you know, when familiarity sets in, it's easy to say something and then you hit the ball to that person, they hit it back to you harder. But those words, you can never take back, you can never unknow them. And I think with Ken and I, I've you know often said, okay, stop right there, stop right there. Because if you go down that path where you, where you lose respect, even if it doesn't happen then, it's not if, it will be when that relationship irretrievably will break down. That's actually amazing advice. Mm. And I think we have time for one more question. Hey, how you doing? Uh, just Kids. to remember what she said a little bit. Um, like you say, you've been married for 33 years. Well, you having two reality television shows, all these businesses. How do you keep, like, the tabloids and everything out of your business and 
stay focused on your Mavericks. Just like remember what he said a little bit because most reality stars, there's like this myth that reality star marriages break up once they become on television. Well, yes, and I certainly think there's a lot of evidence to that in in the well in the housewives. What we've seen, I mean, we've seen Taylor, Camille, Adrian, now Yolanda, um, but in reality, not on reality television, we do see fifty percent of marriages mm -hmm. probably break down anyway. Now, I think one thing, yeah, keeping the tabloids out of your life is something that you can't do. That, that, is, that is one of the things. I never had any sympathy for people when they would say, oh, no pictures, no pictures and all that stuff, because I thought, well, that's what you signed up for. But it does sometimes get a little bit old when you are being hounded and you look like a bag of rubbish, you just want to go around doing, you know, and, and people are like in your face. That, that does, and I never thought I would say that. But marriage, I think, I, I, I do, it's a shame that we've seen that so much on our show, but I do think it might magnify your problems being on a television show. Um, but I don't know, with Ken and I, I think we've actually managed to come through this stronger as a couple, really. And especially when I've really needed him, I, I really felt that he mm -hmm. had my back and, um, you know, has certainly been there. And I think it's actually strengthened our relationship, surprisingly enough. My favorite moments are in your amazing closet when he, you guys are just hanging out and you're drinking your tea and you guys are just kind of... When I see you the know, show, I realize back and forth how many about, cups of tea you know, do I drink a day? I look at that. You're I'm British. A, I, I walk into the store, can I have a cup of tea, Diane? Can I have a cup of tea? I'm, and they're actually saying, they said to me once, he said, can you not ask for a cup of tea? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's my reality. I mean, what else are you going to be drinking, huh? I know, right? Well. Rosé. Yeah. I'd like to drink <laughs> from the bottle sometimes when I'm in the middle of that show. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been so great having you. Well, thank you. Thank you to all of you to our needs and I think we should be equally supportive to theirs and I love the fact that you use your platform to actually promote issues that can help society rather than sell dresses well yeah exactly I um I do believe that with celebrity and I use the word celebrity loosely because I don't know exactly why I would call myself a celebrity. I'm just doing the same thing pretty much I've always done for years, having had 29 restaurants or whatever with my husband and raised my kids and being philanthropic. But I think with celebrity comes um, a certain amount of responsibility, a responsibility to draw attention, to use it for good. Of course, we're going to, you know, try and promote things and enjoy that and have fun because there are a lot of downsides to that as well. You have a lot of your privacy taken away and, and you're a target for a lot of things that being anonymous, wouldn't you, you wouldn't be. But I do think that if you can really do some kind of good and, and use it in a positive way, it's very, very important. What's been for you the biggest up and the biggest down of doing the show now for 200 episodes? Wow. Um, I've met some incredible people. I mean, even the other night, you see just Jennifer Lawrence saying, oh, she's my favorite housewife. And, you know, somebody like that walks into your restaurant and you admire them so much as an actress or you've seen... I remember the first time when Anderson Cooper came up to me and he said, I am such a fan of yours. I'm thinking, okay, he's a really serious person and I'm an idiot and he's like a fan <laughs> of mine. It's like, what's going on here? So I'm thinking, this is kind of bizarre. But, um, yeah, I've been fortunate. Hello, Hello Lisa. Hello. Uh, Lisa, I want everyone to know, arrived with a massive, massive entourage of herself. <laughs> yeah, I travel and alone. And her purse. I travel alone, exactly. And she did her own hair and makeup. And I didn't even know I was doing this. I thought I was just coming for an interview, but I'm happy to be here. And feel free to well, ask me anything, nothing's, you well, know. Well, look how, I think we're pretty psyched to have you here, okay. too. Okay, well, thank you. So, my personal favorite moment from this season of The Housewives. Oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> but this is a good one, is the miniature horse. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, have you guys seen that episode? I mean, Amaze 
Well, it was, you know, you do make a decision as to, uh, you know, what, what can be filmed and what shouldn't be. <laughs> and it was my husband's birthday, and I was thinking, well, what could I buy him? I mean, he truly is. It was his 70th birthday. A man has probably, you know, has pretty much what he wants in life. But we always used to have a lot of horses. And I thought, well, we're not riding anymore, apart from each other, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Twice a year. Exactly. <laughs> if he's lucky. And, you know, I thought I, maybe he would just love this little miniature horse. Anyway, if you followed the episode, it kind of went wrong. But it all resulted in we actually do now have two little miniature oh, horses. Oh, you do? Yes. What uh, are their names? Yeah, Diamonds and Rosé. Oh, Life isn't course. all diamonds and rosé, but it, it should be. So, yeah, they live at the house, and I'm passionate about animals. So, yeah, it really has kind of how added has, to our menagerie. How has Jiggy adjusted to having the two horses? Jiggy doesn't think he's a dog. He is just being catapulted into this kind of world where, you know, he's an activist as well. He works with children with alopecia because Jiggy's always suffered with alopecia and so he works with the National Alopecia Areata Foundation to kind of bring mm -hmm. some levity, you know, and, and go to meetings with the kids and walks on the marches. Um, <laughs> yeah, he does walk sometimes. And he's, um, you know, just become a little dog that I think people saw his struggle. It was kind of suggested that we had him euthanized because he had severe allergies. And he's been with me, really. And, and oh, no, that's Pink Dog. That's not Jiggy. That's Pink Dog. Ah, that's Vanderpump Pet's collar. So, <laughs> Jiggy's there somewhere. No, that's Lisa Rinna. <laughs> Pink dog again. Guys, where's Jiggy? Jiggy's there where somewhere. Where are you getting this animal furniture? Uh, well, it, this is Vanderpump Pets. Oh, my God. Now this. That's Jiggy in the back with Ken. There's, there's Jiggy there. That's uh, Pikachu. Um, I've <laughs> had an incredible fight this year on our hands and I don't know if many of you are aware of it about the Yulin dog meat festival and certainly when it was brought to my attention on Twitter nobody had heard of it and I was absolutely staggered that this barbaric festival they call it and festival kind of conjures up a celebration you know and this is a festival at summer solstice in uh, Yulin mm -hmm. where they believe in torturing dogs and I have pictures of Golden Retriever, for example, strung up by his neck while they sever the limbs and cook them in front of them. I have many, many pictures that have been documented of dogs being skinned alive, boiled alive. And for me, this is barbaric, and I'm doing everything in my power to, to stop this barbaric um, custom. Now, I have two major causes in my life really I mean I have many things that I support keep the memory alive and um, as I said National Alopecia Areata enough but also as I say I can't stress to be able to I do inspirational women speaking to go to cities and talk to women and really implore mm -hmm. them and tell them and encourage them to have confidence and to go with their dream and find their niche and develop their talents and I really enjoy that um, and I was that person that I hated even standing up at my own birthday party and making a speech. So you never know. You know, I think in life, expect the unexpected, really. Um, for me, being given this platform in terms of philanthropy and being able to pick up the phone and say, I need your help mm -hmm. and actually make things happen. And I really do think that is a positive aspect of it. The negative is, you know, being drawn into... Spats. Crap, to put it nicely. Yeah. Um, you know, lawsuits that you, you know, just had one thrown out where the judge says, this is nothing to do with them. Oh, but it is. They were, you know, twice removed. You say, it's nothing to do with them. But by your name being involved, then suddenly it, you know, garners press and attention and things like that are really annoying when you're just trying to run your business and, and live your life. Um, there's been many ups and many downs. I mean, speaking at the United Nations, incredible opportunity mm -hmm. on, about issues that are important to me, being voted Woman of the Year by a state assembly, um, just all these things, getting the Ally Award by Equality California, um, as I say, being a straight ally to the gay community. And I believe as a straight woman, heterosexual woman, um, just trying to be that segue, trying to 
encourage, you know, parents because I believe that, you know, often it's and working on behalf of dogs and the LGBT community. And each one of us can make a difference. And as we've seen this year with marriage equality coming to fruition finally, which we've worked so hard and campaigned so hard for, we're just always working towards a goal. So this year I'm really doing everything I can and working hopefully with um, the governor to try and stop this because it really is awful. And I've organized a PSA, which we've uh, produced ourselves, our Sharon Osborne to help me and organized a march to the Chinese consul. So we've done all that to really draw attention to it and put it on every news channel. And I think now a lot more people are aware of this awful, awful um, celebration, they call it. Now, they believe in torturing the dog makes the meat more tender as it stimulates the adrenaline. And it's just, honestly, if you go to stopulimforever.org, you will see, and it comes with a warning, some of the most heinous, yeah. awful, awful images you've ever seen. And dog is man's best friend, and I've been lucky enough to be... Um, you have eight. I have eight, yes. We've just rescued another one from uh, the Sacramento uh, Animal Rescue. I saw him on Twitter and literally we drove within 12 hours. It took me eight hours to drive there and back to pick up this little guy who's incredible. But I've been fortunate enough to be the judge at the Hero Dog Awards every year. And when you see exactly what dogs can do that we're not even aware of, that dogs are, you know, they're post-traumatic stress syndrome dogs. Dogs are detecting cancer now they predict seizures um obviously we know the cni dogs we know the therapy dogs arson dogs and dogs really that just are so courageous and so empathetic and sympathetic